Hi, today we're going to talk about the Power Clip tool in Corel Draw. So let's get right into it. Basically, the Power Clip tool uh, allows you to take a vector object such as this heart and create a container for pretty much anything you want to put inside of it. Let's see what we're talking about. Um, go over here and get a little picture of a cat. Funny little cat bring him back over here and we're gonna put this cat inside this container once again this is a vector and this could be anything over here anything we want to be contained inside this um, I'm gonna select the cat go up here to effects on my menu power clip place inside container and that puts the cat inside the heart. Now, you can see he's off center, so I'm going to have to go back up to Power Clip again, Effects, Power Clip, Edit Contents right here. And then you can see the outline of my heart, so I can see where I'm going here. And I can put my cat right where I want. I'll use my arrow keys to get him right in the middle there. And then when I'm ready, I'll go back up here to Effects, Power Clip, finish editing this level. And now my cat is where I want him inside the heart. And once again, this is a vector object. object so if I want, I can add an outline to it by right-clicking here on my palette. That adds a hairline. I'm going to go to my outline uh, menu, which is a keyboard shortcut of F12. Somebody complained in one of the comments of my other videos. I didn't show him how to find this uh, menu. It's over here on my menu bar right here, that little pen. Or a keyboard shortcut, which in my case is F12. You, your uh, system may use a different one. We'll uh, have another video about keyboard shortcuts uh, another day. Um, anyway, I can add an outline, give it whatever characteristics I want. And I can copy this, control C or copy up here, uh, paste it. And then I have two. And if I go to the top one here, effects, power clip, extract contents, that gets my cat out of my power clip, delete him. And I'm back to my original heart, but once again, the, uh, we pasted it, so we have two. And I'll turn this black with my left mouse. And I'll use Control Page Down to put it behind my power clip. And then I can use my arrow keys or my mouse to move it out, give it a little drop shadow, whatever I want. Okay, so. That's how the power clip works, and you can use any vector object to become the container for anything you want. It could be a block of text, a bitmap, as in this case, another vector object, a pattern, whatever you like can be inside the power clip. So using power clip, you can create lots of interesting paths effects and, and designs and things like that. Here we have an F16 and this uh, word supersonic. Uh, so once again, effects, power clip, place inside container. We're going to place it into the text. And then we're going to go back up here to effects, power clip, edit contents so we can get our airplane in there the way we want. And when we're ready, we can go effects, power clip, finish editing. And there we have some type with an outline and the airplane inside. So it's kind of a cool effect. And you can probably use your imagination and think of a lot of different ways you can use Power Clip. Now I mentioned, I think I mentioned at the beginning, there are some drawbacks to Power Clip. One of them is if I send this as artwork to someone else who's going to work on it, maybe a printer, um, and I don't tell them this is a power clip. They're going to be trying to work with this, maybe separate the color for a CMYK offset printing, screen printing, whatever. And they're going to not be able to figure out 
what is this? It's a word with a bitmap inside of it, but I can't figure out how to get at the bitmap. Maybe they're not familiar with Power Clip. Maybe they don't even use Corel Draw. They're opening it in a different program. And uh, it would be helpful for them if this was two different objects that they could easily work with without having to figure out what you did. Also, for me to do any work on that photograph, I have to first go up here, Effects, Power Clip, Edit Contents, and now I can do uh, work on the contrast or, uh, you know, whatever I want to do, brighten it up, darken it, whatever. But I first have to go into Power Clip in order to do anything. Then when I'm done, I have to go back up to Power Clip and put it back in. So it's a little awkward for me. I've developed a technique that I use quite often instead of Power Clip, and I'm going to show you what I do. Here we have the state of Wisconsin, and that's a vector object. And we have a JPEG of some cheese, and we, uh, as we know, Wisconsin is well known for making lots of cheese. So uh, for an effect, we're going to do it the, the Power Clip way. Effects, power, I do have my cheese selected. Effects, Power Clip, place inside container. Once again, we're going to put it inside Wisconsin here. And if we don't like where it is, this is just a review here. Edit Contents. Move your cheese around to where you get it the way you want it to look. Effect, power clip, finish editing. And then I can add an outline or do whatever I want. Um, I'm going to show you a little bit of a different way that I like to use quite often. Extract contents. Okay, now we're back to our Wisconsin and our cheese. Instead of power clip, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to draw a big box like this. And I'm going to make that a different color so that I can see my state and my box. Uh, I'll use control page down to drop that down behind my uh, state outline. Once again, that's a vector. I can do one of two things here. I can select Wisconsin and the box, holding down Shift. I can go up here to Combine. That combines those to make a little frame. But I also lose my original object. So let's go back to what we had. I'm going to go to select my state of Wisconsin. I'm going to go up here to uh, Arrange, Shaping. That's going to open up my shape menu, and I'm going to use the trim tool. So my state is selected. I'm going to hit trim. I'm going to trim that pink box. Now I have my original vector and a little cutout of my pink box. So I'm going to put my cheese over here. Use control page down to put it behind uh, my pink box. And here's what I like about this. Now I don't have to use the power clip feature to go up and, and edit it. I can just pull this around wherever I want till it looks kind of how I want, what I have in mind. And I think I like it just like that. So I'm going to use my pink and my trim once again. I'm going to trim my bitmap. Okay, delete my pink box. I've got a little bit of bitmap over here where my... Um, Pink box didn't. So I'm going to go to Arrange, Break uh, RGB Bitmap Apart, which allows me to delete that part. And now this is a JPEG. It's in the shape of Wisconsin, but there's no power clip. There's no uh, anything other than the uh, JPEG. So once again, if I want to lighten this up, I can go right up here to uh, uh, Effects, Adjust, Tone Curve, we're in Corel Draw. you don't have to go to Photo Paint for this. This brings up my Tone Curve menu and I can lighten up my cheese here as I please. Make it look a little bit more yellow. There we go. And then, I can, if I want to add an outline, I can take my original, I can give it a black outline, 
I'll give it no fill. And then I'm going to go to my outline uh, flyout. Once again, that's over here on my menu. I don't want someone to tell me I didn't show them how to do this. Uh, make a six point outline, give it round corners. I don't have to worry about behind fill. Now here's a command um, to line this up. I can do two things. I can select both of these and go to my Arrange, Align and Distribute, and use my Align tool. Or I can use a keyboard shortcut since I have both of these selected. If I hit my C key, that aligns them both uh, horizontally. Then I hit my E key. C stands for Center, E stands for Even. The E key will align them vertically. So now they're perfectly lined up with one another. And I have my outline. If I use my dig tool, I can get my, the dig tool is alternate left mouse. And that, now I have my black one uh, outline. And I can give that a fill. And I'll bring it to the front just so you can see what I did. I gave it a fill. Put it back down where it was. Then I'm going to copy it, paste it. I use my keyboard, but you can also use your uh, arrange, uh, edit, copy, edit, paste up here. Copy, paste. There's also a copy and a paste on your toolbar, so there's a lot of ways to do things. And now I have three objects my outline, my solid, and my bitmap. Z, control Z is undo. I'm going to put this down behind everything else. Control page down. And that becomes my drop shadow here. So now I've got the state of Wisconsin. That's actually a JPEG of cheese and a black outline, and a black drop shadow. So that's an alternative to the power clip. The beauty of this is if I send this to a service bureau or a printer, and they want to work with this cheese, they don't have to figure out the power clip or anything like that, because it stands alone as a JPEG. So it's a little easier to position. It's a little easier to work with once you're finished. It's an alternative to the power clip that I find myself using quite often. So experiment with the power clip. Once again, any vector object can be used as a power clip container. And pretty much anything you want can go in at a pattern, a block of text, a JPEG, whatever. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe to my channel. Smash that like button. I just wanted to say that. And I hope your next project goes well.